Hi, I'm Mark Richman from Chef Knives To Go. I've um, been doing some sharpening today and I wanted to uh, do a quick review of a uh, stone that's become one of my favorite mid-grit stones on our site. Uh, it's the Imanishi 800 stone. And um, I've been using this stone for my kitchen knives almost exclusively and I'll show you uh, how I actually sharpen on it. But um, this stone is pretty thick, it's fast, and it leaves a really nice toothy edge on, on my kitchen knives, and I like it a lot. So, um, requires a bit of a soak, and I'm going to just walk you through sharpening one knife. Um, I've done this many times before, but trying to uh, become more minimalist when I sharpen and try to keep it as simple as possible. So. I'll give you some tips on how to uh, sharpen a knife with just this stone. Uh, I'll do a little refinement on a finer stone at the end, but um, it's not necessary. This, uh, this stone will give you a perfectly good working edge uh, once you're done with it in about five minutes. So, needs a little soak. Not too much, maybe, uh, I don't know, five minutes. Uh, I'm not going to give it five minutes here. I'll just run some water on it. Uh, the nice thing about using a sink bridge, and this is the Nanawa sink bridge that we sell on the site, is that um, if it dries out when you're starting to use it, you can just add more water. So um, once it soaks in just a little bit, we'll be ready to go. Um, I think that's about right. So this is a, uh, a knife I'm going to use. Uh, this is a, uh, a mule, um, and by mule I mean it's a test knife. Uh, I'm developing a knife um, using uh, Aogami number no. 2 steel with a simple handle on it. And uh, this knife was just to um, check the specs, uh, the, the height of the knife and the handle and things like that. So they sent me a knife with, uh, as a tester and um, down the road we'll have this on the site. But anyways, it'll make a perfectly good knife to sharpen. It's pretty dull right now. I've been using it a bit. So um, anyways, we're going we're gonna to sharpen the knife. I'm going to assume that you don't know very much about sharpening. And what we're going to do is we're going to raise the, the knife a little bit off the stone. I'm going to put my fingers right on the edge so that when I lift it up, I'll feel the edge and my fingers touching the stones just a tiny bit and that'll give me a little bit of uh, angle awareness as I sharpen. Um, and then we're going to sharpen all the way through until when I run my fingers across the side of the knife like this that it scratches my fingers and it's called a burr. And then we're going to flip it over, we're going to do the same thing on the other side and then we're going to go very lightly on both sides to remove that burr, which is a little flap of metal. And uh, once we're done that, we're pretty much done with sharpening the knife. So I'm going to raise this up about, I would say about the thickness of my pinky, like that. And I tend to like to sharpen, um, hold on a second. I tend to like to sharpen in sections, uh, especially on the flatter part of the knife, and then I like to turn it a little bit to try to get at the tip. Um, once there's curve in the knife up here, it's a little bit more difficult to go straight across this way, so I kind of angle it as I go. So anyways, I'm just going to go, and I tend to like to count about 20 strokes. sink bridge has a little adjustment underneath that I need to push it up again so it doesn't move. Now what I just did there was I took my finger and I ran it across, sideways across the knife to see if I could feel that burr starting to form and I felt a little of it but not enough. Okay, 
so that's about it. You know, so I'm going to move over and do it again. Alright, so I have a burr all the way along this knife except there's a little spot here and a little spot here. This is common up here. Um, so, find the place where I can't feel it scratching my finger. Give it a few more strokes. And I'm pressing relatively hard here. I want to, this first time around, I want to grind this knife. I want to grind the steel down. So I'm pressing, I'm probably putting a couple pounds of pressure on this, maybe three pounds or four pounds of pressure. It's just a guess. Alright, I'm getting a burr all along this knife now. I'm going to sharpen it on the other side. We're going to do the same thing, about a pinky. Got my fingertips right over the edge. It's probably a good idea not to really lay them on the stone because you'll grind your tips of your fingers. And I've actually had people say that I used to tell people to put their thumb down on the stone or as a kind of a guide in the back. And I've actually had people email me and say, "Hey, I got a bloody finger from this." So. I, did, I don't mean for you to actually push down against it and grind your fingers. Just kind of use it to hover over the, the stone, basically. So if you go up a little bit or down a little bit, it'll touch your fingertips and it'll help you guide you to, back to the proper angle. After you get a little practice, you'll have muscle memory about how to do this. It's like riding a bike. And you won't really need that but I've gotten the habit of doing it and so I keep my fingers right on there. Okay so now I've ground the other side and now I have a burr on the opposite side of the knife except for right here again. So um, what's going on is I created a burr the first time that went down and then when I ground on this side the burr goes up like this. So now we have it ground on both sides and we have chased the burr back and forth one side to the other. Now we want to get rid of it. Um, once we get rid of it we'll have an edge that's ground into a point with no flap of steel on the top. So. Um, what I'm going to do is just do a couple backward strokes. They're also called stropping strokes. They're also called edge trailing strokes. All those terms mean pretty much the same thing. I don't need that anymore. And what I'm doing here is I'm just dragging the edge back along the knife. It's a much more gentle kind of stroke than pushing the edge against the stone. And what this does is it will abrade that burr right off of the knife. I'm particularly concerned about getting all the burr off because uh, if you don't, what happens is that little flap of steel will roll over and it will create a seemingly dull edge on the knife. So that should do it. Now if I run my fingers across this, I don't it doesn't scratch my fingers anymore. Found a little little spot here. One more. So 
So that should be gone, but just to make sure, I'm going to run it through some cork. Synthetic cork or regular cork. Just run the knife through. Be careful if you do it like this, because your fingers are behind it. And if there's any remaining burr on that edge, usually the cork will get rid of it. You can use all kinds of stuff to deburr. All kinds. Uh, wood, different kinds of softer woods will do. Uh, felt works really well. We sell a little felt block that works really well. Um, so that should have gotten rid of the burr. And we should have a usable, workable, nice toothy edge now. What I mean by toothy edge is that this is coarse enough so that when the edge is formed, there are a lot of little teeth in the edge. Up and down, up and down, up and down. It's basically the scratch pattern coming to an end at the end of the knife, which makes the edge. So that kind of edge usually works really well on stuff like tomatoes uh, because it grabs into the skin and rips right through on a very fine base uh, basis. So anyways, I'm going to dry this off. We'll test it on a little bit of paper. And that is a sharp knife. Now, um, we can do a little refining of the edge if you want. I usually do this, so I'll just add this in, just give you a little extra. Uh, this is a natural stone that's real hard. It's called the Ohira. And, um, but any fine stone will work just as well. And what I'm going to do with this stone is just give it a very light, uh, basically repeat the process very lightly. This stone isn't quite big enough to get pushed into the holder, so I'm just going to stick this in here to allow me to shut the holder onto it so it doesn't move. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing except uh, I'm going to go much lighter. Um, very, you know, this is the finer work of improving the edge. We're polishing the edge basically. We're not grinding the edge. So I'm using about a third of as much force. A little bit more than the, the weight of the knife and my hand. but the same angle and this stone is extremely hard and very fine so it'll do a really nice job of evening out that first stone and also kind of uh, what I like to say is polishing the teeth of the first stone kind of refines those teeth so that they don't fall apart as quickly when you're cutting um, so, nice and easy.